Yeah, we go. We are recording. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Move for a Movement. I am here with Mark Travis Rivera, a professional storyteller based in California. Thank you so, so much for being here today, Mark. And I look so look forward to discussing all of the various creative endeavors and things that you do. It's all awesome. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be on your show and happy to share my story. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, professional storyteller. That is intriguing. Please tell me more. Yeah. Um, sort of what is involved with that? And I'm also curious, is there a central mission without that? Or is it sort of in the vein of the act of the storytelling is kind of the meat of it itself, if that makes yeah. sense? Yeah, so I, I call myself now a professional storyteller because for the longest time, I was trying to find the common thread in all that I do. So for those who don't right. know, uh, my name is Mark Travis Rivera. My pronouns are he, him, and his. And I have been writing stories since I can remember. I won, I won my first poetry contest in third grade. Um, so I've been writing and being published as a writer since I was in high school. Um, I don't say that to brag, I just say that to say that like, in my almost 30 years of life, telling stories has been the core of who I am. And so whether I'm telling stories through the written word or verbally speaking or do choreography and dancing, uh, I realized that, um, the theme was telling stories. So that's why I call myself a professional storyteller. So it's more about the act of storytelling, but the mission, um, excuse me, the mission, I thought that was a great question that you asked. And I tell stories because my greatest fear is dying with untold stories within me. Mm. Do you have There's that written somewhere? That's gorgeous. Like uh, up on your wall to see every day. Like <laughs> I, I want to have that like to see every day. Like <laughs> it's one of my fears that I'm going to die before I get to tell my full story. And so I am always thinking about way to tell stories, way to empower others, to see themselves reflected. Growing up, I didn't see myself reflected on TV much or at all as a disabled, queer, Latinx, gender non-conforming person. So not that I want to go into TV eventually, but I want to impact and make people see that their self, their, their stories is possible, which is why I have my first collection of poetry and essays, drafts and a perfect collection of writing is available on Amazon. And I wrote that book and self-published because I wanted young people to see themselves reflected in my story. That's a, a huge and very important conversation right now about whose stories are being told, who gets to tell them, whose stories are we not telling, and mm. what is the large scale effect of that right. in, in our society. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. So you're doing the work. That's amazing. Thank you. I'm doing the work, um, trying, you know, I, I think. Um, <laughs> There was a time in my life when I felt like I had to choose between dance and writing. Mm. And now I feel like I can just exist. Mm -hmm. I don't have to choose one over the other. They're all equally important. I also have a podcast. That's another form of storytelling mm -hmm. called Marking the Path. So mm. I don't have to choose anymore. I can just be. Mm. And all these things that you do, it's you being it's part of you because it's all that storytelling. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, you know, to think you also are an activist, which says on your website, activist, speaker, and, and speaking as well. It's like, and I've heard so many times just being in the organizing space in activism, like the effective approach is storytelling, like tell this story. That is what grabs people. So that I also found interesting in that, in that vein of, of storytelling. That's also, you know, part of what you do in, in demonstrating the power of storytelling and how you put it forward out there. Absolutely. I mean, I love the quote by Dr. Brene Brown. Anyone that knows me knows I'm a huge fan of her. Um, <laughs> for those of you who haven't read her books, huh? She's the queen. Yeah. She's the queen. Go on. <laughs> um, for those of you who haven't checked out her work, please check it out. It's so worth reading and listening to. Mm -hmm. She has two podcasts out. She doesn't hire me to promote her. I just, because her work changed my life. So I just talk mm -hmm. about her so openly. 
Um, but what I will say is that, you know, she says maybe stories are just data with a soul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? So stories yeah. are a way we connect and tell and share data and share information and 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 at the core of stories is this, is connectivity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so interesting knowing just about her life and coming through through grad school and sociology. She did social work. You know, yeah. there was this this like qualitative research is is soft. You know, it's feminine. It's not the hard science and you know coded masculine and, and the the sort of gender norms and power structures kind of implicit in that that's what she experienced. Um, so it's, in, I hadn't heard that before, um, that she said that, but it's, it's like in line with knowing her story. That's, that's really interesting. And that's really powerful. Yeah. It's one of my favorite quotes from her. Um, maybe stories are just data with a soul. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. So right. yeah, there's power in storytelling. Mm-hmm. And there are so many things in our overarching structure and our overarching society that like, if it doesn't have data like the hard numbers it's not validated like holistic forms of healing because they don't have the data right now insurance won't pay for it for instance right Um, but I've always said like that doesn't mean that it doesn't have that power Um, yeah it just demonstrates it in a different way yeah no for sure and I think you know the reason why I gravitate towards Dr. Brown so much is because her work is rooted in data. Mm-hmm. You know, there's proof, there's data that you can analyze it, you can examine it, you can touch it, you know, through a book or through whatever. And there are some thought leaders out there that are more spiritual and that's fine too. But when your thought leadership is only, only based on spirituality and not something that's concrete, I struggle with that. And also our common threads, because, you know, there, there are these common threads among spiritual systems, but we all understand them differently. So what is that thing that's a common language for all of us? You know, and I think, you know, Dr. Brown in her own ways and other thought leaders similar to her have captured that, you know, in a way that is more universally accessible, you know, resonant, perhaps. Right, right. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of your story, I know that, you know, you were in New York, you had um, the Mark Dance Project, you were very dedicated for that for 10 years. And then you shift of course, you went um, to work for Access Dance Company, and that's how you ended up on the West Coast. Um, yeah. So you've seen these, these professional, personal transitions. Um, I'm curious about how you navigate that you know, with everything you do and all these kind of things that come along with those transitions, how do you walk through that with, with equanimity and, and calm and presence? Um, it's interesting because if you'd have told me even five years ago that I would up and leave the East Coast and take a job in California, um, while I was always a dream to live in California, I never thought I'd actually live in California. Uh, uh-huh. My relationship with Access started in 2013. I was an apprentice for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the time, our founder, their founder, sorry, I don't work there anymore. So um, uh, yeah. th- their founder, Judy Smith, invited me to be an apprentice. And that's how the relationship started. And it made, I have maintained a relationship with Access throughout the years in various capacities. I was part of their, Choreo Lab, their inaugural Choreo Lab in 2017 okay. or 2018, I should say. Uh, I'm great friends with Mark Brew, their director, and I was part of the convenings and different things like that. So I always had a relationship with Access ever since I was an apprentice. And then when the community engagement manager role came up, um, I was encouraged to apply. Mm. And so I did. I got the job. I moved to California. About a a few months into the role, um, there was a, a beginning of a mass exodus at the organization. So mm-hmm. the executive director announced that she was leaving. The marketing associate announced they were leaving. Development announced they were leaving. And the operations announced that they were leaving. Um, so it was a mass exodus. And it was just Mark Brew and I, the two Marks. And then mm-hmm. we had consultants helping us. And we had all these different things going on. 
And so I like to think that I came to the organization at a very critical time in this history. And, mm. then, COVID, and then COVID hit and COVID mm. drastically changed my job. And so, you know, like you said, I ran a Mark Dance project for 10 years. I started in 2009, it ended in 2019. And the reason why it ended is because I felt like it was either gonna be the five-year mark, the 10-year mark, the 15-year mark, or the 20-year mark. And I knew I didn't have it in me, no pun intended with the mark. Um, <laughs> I, knew I, didn't have, I knew I didn't have it in me to continue for another five years with running a company. It's a lot of work. And so mm -hmm. I joined Access, the hope is growing and changing and evolving. And then all these changes started happening with COVID and the mass exodus at Access. And I realized, you know, through the DILT program, the Dance Institute for Leadership Development and Training through Dance USA, that I didn't want to become an artistic director of a company again. Mm -hmm. And that I didn't want to do dance work full time. Mm -hmm. So I started applying for jobs and I applied for a consulting firm called Nico White Consulting that does diversity, African inclusion work. And I share that because I think oftentimes as artists, we think we have to pigeonhole ourselves into one area. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And my career is proof that the pivot is worth it. You uh -huh. know, and so I've pivoted out of higher ed to do dance work full time. And then I did dance work for a little bit. And I was like, oh, don't want to do that full time. So I pivoted again to do DEI work. And it's my first week on the job at the time of this recording. And I'm having a blast. That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, you know, I always tell people, you have to be able to embrace change. Now, me five years ago, I would never even think about embracing change because I hate change. And I still hate change. But what I realized that change is necessary in life if you want to evolve and grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, I mean, I it's, by, yeah, it's biologically primed in us yes. to because consistency and certainty equals safety in terms of like how we evolve, right? Yes, amen. But in this modern world, yeah, without change, there is not growth. If it's the same, like by definition, like things are not changing. Like it's just, it's just flat. You're not like, you're not evolving as a human, right? Right, no, um, exactly. Yeah, I think also something else interesting that you brought up, it reminded me, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of the, um, uh, what's it called? Words that move me podcast. Um, no. the, yeah, the, she, this uh, famous choreographer, she's choreographed for like Justin Timberlake and, and all these big names. Um, oh. Yeah, she has on all these kind of thought leaders in dance. And at one point she was talking about like a lot of dancers do think like you were saying, like, I need to be a dancer and this needs to be 200% me. And like all I do is eat, sleep, breathe, dance. And she said, not necessarily. You're interested in fashion, do dance and fashion. You're interested in film directing, do that and dance. Like there can be these parts of us. And in fact, this is kind of more my, my thought than what she was saying. Like those things enhance what we do in any art form. Like the dance can feed the fashion, the fashion can feed the dance, right? Because ultimately art is about our experiences. Yes. Right? So if we're here in dance, like there can be a pigeonholing, you know, to use the word you did, a pigeonholing of our experiences. And then what can we bring to dance if right. we're only experiencing dance? Right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've been writing for a very long time and, um, mm -hmm. you know, I never felt I had to choose one aspect of my identity over another. I am queer, I'm disabled, mm -hmm. I'm gender non-conforming, I'm femme, I'm Latinx. And I never felt I had to choose one aspect of my identity over the other. I am all right. those things in totality. I exist mm -hmm. at the intersections of all those things. Right. And I'm proud of that. Mm. Any human, like no matter in your level of, of privilege or like- Yeah, all of us. You we have these different aspects. aspects. Yeah. So I didn't mean to talk over you. Yes, we have all these intersection identities. So yeah. yeah. And denying a certain part, you know, it like never ends up well. Like you oh. are who you are. <laughs> and we can change in certain ways through our lives through like, mm -hmm. you know, either intentionally or unintentionally for good or ill. But like there are certain immutable parts of us that denying them never works. <laughs> never well, works well. 
Dr. Brown, not to keep bringing her up, I apologize. I, I know all my friends. I love it. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> it says that unused creativity is, is not benign, it's dangerous. And so I'm paraphrasing there. But this idea here that if we deny an aspect of ourselves, it doesn't just disappear, it will manifest into depression, um, addiction, grief sorrow mm -hmm. it'll become all these things that you don't want it to become uh -huh. and so i i always encourage people to be who they are to, in their totality uh-huh uh -huh. yeah it makes me think i uh, speaking with another artist who had done a lot of work with a community-based um theatrical arts like they did theater and musicals and dance um organization and the founder had always told her for, for humans, there is either creation or destruction. And that's a little bit more binary than mm -hmm. what you were saying, but it's like, if we don't create, that ends up as destruction. Like there are those two impulses in us, right? <laughs> and we got to do either, you know? So I think creating is better. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And sometimes destruct destruction from the debris can rise something to create you know like right 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 so it's not yeah it's not always it's not always I'm never always thing. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I agree that creating is definitely a natural thing for me I'm always thinking about what I can create next I'm always thinking about ideas right. and sometimes mm -hmm. as a creative thinker I have too many ideas so I have to like pull back you know so. right, right 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 yeah and in a more kind of granular level of like creating or destructing it's like if a certain parts of ourselves don't get to manifest in creativity, like does that part of ourselves die? And is the signal of that, like you were saying, like those mental health impacts of like depression or grief or anxiety or? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good for Talk. thought. Mm. Yeah, good thought for sure. So I think that's a good segue from what you're saying about all the different things you do. Um, I am curious about how you balance it all because now you're also in grad school. And I know I in yeah. grad school was so stressed getting nowhere near enough sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'd like to hear what um, are your, what's your approach to keeping, finding and man maintaining balance in your life? I think it was Shonda Rhimes, another woman I love, um, mm -hmm. that said, when you see me succeeding in one area of my life, best believe that I'm not succeeding in another area of my life. <laughs> you know, that you, you can have it all, but you can't necessarily be successful or doing it all good all the time in every area. And so I live by a train, so there's a train coming by, so I apologize if you hear that train. Um, but- City life. Train, I'm sorry, what? City life. City life, yes. Train's coming by, yeah. Yeah, um, and so, you know, Shonda Ryan talks about when you see her succeed in one area, she may be suffering or not doing as great in another area. And so while I have it, I like to think that people perceive me as having it all put together and that I'm well polished. Um, I'm human. You know, I've, I've started my career at 17 years old. I, I would have spent the majority of my life developing my career, right? This, this, this is not an overnight success. I didn't become this overnight person. You know, I didn't have that luxury. I've been yeah. grinding and working for over 10 years. And, you know, I say that because I think sometimes people look at me a certain way, not you per se, but just people in general. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he seems to have it all put together. He's doing fine. What people don't realize is behind the scenes, there's moments when I cry or I get frustrated or I get overwhelmed or there's moments when I feel like all I'm gonna end up with is my career because I'm single and I'm turning 30 and I still can't find love. Um, mm -hmm. So while my successes have been great and I appreciate the opportunities I've been given, mm -hmm. I recognize that it has come at a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. I don't have a lover. I don't have a partner right now. And while I know love and I know what it means to be loved, I am so focused on my career that mm -hmm. I'm either intimidating to, to men because I'm so driven or mm -hmm. they can't get over my gender not conformingness or mm -hmm. they like my light, but not my darkness. 
Mm. Yeah, and I think love is is loving both. Yeah, you gotta like, you gotta love it all. I'm a whole person. I'm perfect. I'm worthy of love and belonging. Brene Brown talks about that. Um, and so to to talk about sorry the train. Can you hear it? A little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry. <laughs> Ugh, that train comes at all hours of the day sorry so like I can never map out my interviews around the train because it comes at all times um no worries so I apologize um and to your viewers I apologize and so time management is really important my calendar I literally live by my calendar literally I wake up in the morning first thing I do is look at my calendar and well, before I go to bed, I get my calendar so I can kind of mentally prepare for the day ahead tomorrow. Right. Um, but when I wake up in the morning, I look at my calendar again to refresh my memory of what I have to do. And then I start my day. And there's some days where, you know, I work um, for an East Coast company, Nico White Consulting. And so my hours are a little bit different because uh, I'm on the West Coast. So I work 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then I have my grad school, I have my podcast, I have my speaking engagements, my presentations, my writing sessions. Um, and so everything is by my calendar. If it's not on the calendar, it does not happen. Same here. <laughs> it needs to be down in the calendar. It will be it forgotten. Will be, it will be forgotten or it will get overlooked. Um, right. So I'm really intentional about what I say yes to. Mm, so when you ask me to uh -huh. do this, it was a no brainer. Hmm. Like, yeah, sure. And I, you know, I don't say yes to everyone because I don't have the bandwidth to say yes to everyone. Um, but you did such an amazing job writing my story for DIY, DIY magazine. DIY dancer. Yeah. DIY dancer. Thank you. Um, that I knew I had to say yes to you. And so what I do is I'm really, so setting some boundaries, right? So set boundaries on your time be clear about what aligns with your purpose and what doesn't, mm -hmm. right? You have to be clear to yourself and to others. And also, you know, you have to be intentional about your self-care. Uh-huh. So for uh -huh. example, I've been up since 5.30 in the morning to get ready for today. I've been going in meetings and emails and work and other things nonstop. I have this interview with you and then after I'm gonna have dinner with Elise Patterson. Oh, who has been uh, on the show? Go check it out, episode two. Oh, <laughs> nice. Um, and so she's in town for something, and so we decided oh. to do dinner. So we're gonna have dinner, and I'm so excited. But of course, I'm gonna crash after because you know it's been a long day. But yeah. that's my balance. You have to be intentional. You know, you only get one life yeah. in this lifetime. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So some nuggets of advice I would give to people who are wondering how I do it all. I think some great just main pointers there of like calendar really helps like get organized about it. Yeah. Be intentional about what you say yes to and make sure it aligns with your purpose. And my question there that popped up in my mind was, do you have to know what the purpose is first? I would say yes <laughs> for that purpose, for that step to work. Yes. Um, yeah, yes. maybe that's the first step. If, if you don't you know what your purpose clear is. on your purpose. You have to get clear on your purpose. Would you have any uh, guidance for people who don't know how to do that? If they're confused, but like, how do I find out what my purpose is? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the first thing I would suggest for people is to listen to their inner mm -hmm. voice. Listen. Uh -huh. Because deep down, the knowing is there. Mm -hmm. But so often, we allow external noises to block our ability to hear ourselves. Beautiful. Yep. So that's the first thing I would recommend is listen to yourself. Listen to what you want. You, Marie Kondo, your life. You know what brings you joy. You know what that spark right. is. Right. If you're doing something that doesn't bring you joy or align with your purpose, why are you doing it? It's not worth it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, another thing they can do is go to therapy. I've been in therapy for over 10 years and it's been mm -hmm. my saving grace. And mm -hmm. I have an amazing therapist. 
Uh, and I recommend everyone to have a therapist if they can. So those are some quick pointers I would give people about how to get in tune with their purpose. Mm, but I, I love believe, it. Yeah, and I think sometimes people conflate career with purpose and that's not true. Okay. Come on now, we're gonna keep it real. Mm-hmm. That's not true. You might a be career. in a career, you know, just because of the circumstances of your life, that's not actually your purpose. Like I went to grad right. school for something and have a mountain of debt <laughs> still um, in something that I'm not currently doing because I think I did, in a way I was kind of forced to, you know, listen to that inner voice. And it told me that wasn't my purpose. So I shifted course to something that's that did okay. feel like You pivoted. Oh my God, you just pivoted and that's okay. The debt, not so much, but the pivot, totally worth it. Free college. <laughs> yes. Joe Biden, cancel student debt. Yeah. Watching it, watching it every day. Mm-hmm. Coming in some form. Um, but I will say I don't have to pay anything per month because of the IBR program, income-based repayment, but it's still there. Okay. So that was extremely helpful. Thank you, Obama. Non-ironically, but we can do better. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's my advice is that your career doesn't always equate to your purpose, right? Yeah. My purpose is easy. I know my purpose. I can say it in one sentence. Should I say it? Go ahead. I'd love to hear it. My purpose in life is to empower others to live their best life authentically. That is beautiful. Yeah. I it's, love it. It's, it's what I do to my life coaching business um do my podcast stories it's just my way of doing that of helping others see Mm -hmm. Mm, i was gonna say is is the storytelling the avenue yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's the method Mm. Mm -hmm. what drives me is my purpose i love it so Uh uh-huh uh-huh all wonderful stuff i love it i love it yeah So um, I would love to hear a little bit more about, actually, never mind. We talked a little bit about that. I was going to ask more about your day-to-day, but you discussed that a little bit. Like you have your work and then you do podcasting and your life coaching and speaking and it's a lot, but because you know your purpose, it all happens, you know, when you're intentional about how you spend that time. Yeah, I'm super intentional. And, you know, it's about getting clear with yourself and others. Mm, 100%. And, you know, ever since I did the pivot out of Axis, my energy levels have been so much higher. And I also went went back to drinking coffee. So it could be a mixture of both of those things. But I say that to say that when you are, and this might sound like Oprah, because Oprah influenced this thought. When you are not following the call of your life, you can't fully be alive. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I am doing work that fully aligns with who I am today. Not that I won't change again, but I am feeling alive in a way I haven't felt in a while. Mm. That's so interesting. And it's like, literally, you saw that effect. Yeah. like you're doing this and your energy level is this and then you're doing this and it was a lot more enjoyable <laughs> what that ended up being for you uh-huh. where you are yeah that's a sign of like you are aligned with your purpose you are where you need to be yeah, yeah. and I think you know while waking up early early it's not fun and today was extra hard because it's Friday <laughs> um Man, isn't it beautiful to live a life I'm proud of? Mm-hmm. I you think know? that's a great goal. Like, I want to live a life I'm proud of. Yeah. And maybe part of that, like, reflection and that listening of what is my purpose? Like, what is going to be a life that I am proud of? What would make me proud of me? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Yeah. I would love to hear about 
that since you're so you seem so attuned um and self-aware um and know how to handle setbacks because you are aligned with your purpose in that way i would love to hear about what's given you light through COVID, how you've maybe made certain adjustments pivoted in certain ways as you're saying um through COVID, through this incredibly challenging time through what has probably been the biggest shift in all of our lives that we personally have lived it's like the elephant in the room question i feel like but i i feel like also you could um really share some wisdom there yeah for sure had COVID not hit i don't think i would have left access when i did mm. you know, i might have stayed longer because of fear because everyone told me it was a great next step because i have this internal pressure to succeed at everything i do um but also, if I'm being honest, my podcast has really gotten me through. I started my podcast in the pandemic mm -hmm. year. And mm -hmm. again, telling stories, communicating, sharing stories, it's all about stories. And I hate to sound like a broken record, but, you know, in this time of isolation or this virtual space, the one thing that has made me feel alive is the fact that I'm connected to people through stories. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm reading it, was, listening to it, stories have kept me going. Mm, I was just thinking, as you were saying that it aligned with what I was thinking, but we do feel disconnected in this time and we see it in rising rates of anxiety and depression of, because humans, you know, I go back to thinking this way a lot, but humans evolved as social creatures. Like we're meant to be in community with each other. We're like hard mentally, hard. emotionally, and physically. Right, like there are things in us that crave hugs and high fives and yes. seeing each other through screens, like it just doesn't quench that. Right? Um, but storytelling, that's a way through which we can feel connected to humans because it mm -hmm. brings understanding. You know, we understand their stories better, maybe not fully, you know, maybe you can't ever fully understand another human because you're not them, but right. we understand another person's experience better and right. that can bring us into connection. Mm hmm for sure i agree with that mm, i love it yeah i'm yeah. curious uh to sort of start to wrap up um what's next are you thinking you're just keeping doing everything you're doing other kind of plans and visions you might want to share um yeah so what's next i just started my new job so i'm looking to grow yep. in that area and hopefully grow with the company i really like the company so far um i am working on a chat book which is a small collection of poetry called yearning hmm. i am looking to choreograph some more to get more commissions to choreograph working on that yeah um what else am i working on um Finishing grad school, um, and dating more. I want to make time for love. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's all I have coming up, or mm -hmm. what I want to work on. All in line with your intention. Part of it is self care, right? Because that, because we need that to also fill our purpose. Because yes. you can't give from an empty cup. I no. think is also another Brene Brown quote. <laughs> Yeah, you need to be able to to give from a full cup. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I'm at. And you know what? I think um, who I'm becoming is always evolving. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so mm -hmm. grateful that I'm that I'm more adept to change. Mm -hmm. That I'm not fearing it the way I used to. Mm -hmm. I feel like life would be kind of boring if there was never evolution. <laughs> if you yeah, just stay I, the same person your whole life, like I feel like how boring. Yeah, you can't stay the same person. Now, whether you embrace it is different, but I think life will have a way of shaking you uh -huh. to your core and changing you, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this pandemic yeah. has fundamentally shifted the way we live, the way we learn, the way we lead, the way we love, hands down, fundamentally shifted. Mm. Uh, you want to accept it and embrace it is one thing, but you can't deny that it has changed the society we live in. COVID has done a number on all of us. 
Yeah. And all these individual ripple effects, you know, like, mm-hmm. I know, like you said, led to part of what led to you leaving access, right? I know for me, I wouldn't be working on a book or, you know, doing this podcast or have started a, a yoga and mindfulness business for dancers. You know, I wouldn't have done that if life had been like it was in January, 2020, mm. you know? And, and it's just like, what are those ripple effects with that happening over and over in society? I would hope that it's going to be, you know, of all of these people finding their purpose, perhaps I would hope. Um, I think that could be powerful. I think so too. All right. Anything else you want to share before, before we say goodbye? Before we say goodbye. Um, feel free to connect with me on social media. I love talking to people online. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mark, M-A-R-K, T-R-A, V as in Victor, Rivera, R-I-V-E-R-A. Uh, you can shoot me an email at Mark at MarkTravisRivera.com. I would love to stay connected. So if you watch this video or this podcast and you want to connect, feel free to follow me and send me a message. Love it. We will put all those handles and the email on your website, evil website as well. We'll put that um, when we post the episode, that'll be up. And listen to the podcast as well. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me on on your show. And I hope that you you. guys I hope you got something out of this conversation. Oh, so much. So many, so many like threads and, and uh, food for thought, as we were saying. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time uh, in sharing your insights, your experiences, your story, because it matters. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, remember if this conversation resonated with you, uh, like comment, subscribe, all those good things, share it with someone else uh, who you think it might be meaningful for, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye everyone.